So let's get some of the research stuff out of the way here so we can talk a bit about this. So this is the, the classic academic definition of what social networks are all about. I'm not going to regurgitate this back to you, but you can sort of take a look at that and review that if you're uh, curious. Um, the first um, officially recognized site was called Six Degrees. It's now defunct. It's actually starting to make a comeback. But it started in, what did I say, 2000, I'm sorry, 1997 and was shut down in 2000. This was the first officially recognized social networking site. Um, some factoids. And a lot of this came from that handout, which I gave to each of you. Hopefully there was enough copies. If there's not, let me know. We'll get you some more. Uh, social networking now represents the fastest growing internet segment. So, despite what we may think about this stuff personally, on a personal level, and we think, you know, there's really no application to teaching and learning and all those great questions, we can't deny the fact that this stuff is growing exponentially and your students are using it exponentially. So, I think it helps us as people who are educators to embrace this, to start to understand it, to kind of get our heads around this stuff because it's happening whether we like it or not. It's going to continue to happen. <clears throat> so social networking sites are now growing at a rate of 47% annually. Blogs and net social networking are now the fourth most popular online activity. And it's, and it's going to, so here, here fairly soon it's going to um, um, be ahead of even email, actually, in terms of its social significance and its, its uh, information exchange process. 67% of global online population now visit a social network. And surprisingly, the U.S. does not lead that pack. You can see that the European countries are actually ahead of us. Um, I actually have some Facebook people on my list that are from Italy and some of these other countries, so I can attest to the fact that it's very, very big in Europe. Uh, member sites now account for one in every minute's total online. The, the largest one, though, is not Facebook, although you would think that it would be because it's so, you know, in our face every day. It's something we hear about, it's talked about every day on the news. But it's actually this application operated by Google out of Brazil called Workit. This is the largest one. It has more penetration than even, um, than even Facebook, although I think that Facebook is probably catching up pretty quick. But you may not have realized that Google does have a counter application to, to the Facebook phenomenon. So I sort of was trying to figure out how we're going to go through this and tackle this today in the, in the time that we have. And so what I think I'll do, if you'll bear with me, is I'm going to kind of quickly plow through the bulk of this presentation as fast as I can, give you some some you know six mile up look at what's going on with this technology, some some facts and some things like that, and then we'll come back and actually do hands on stuff. I think that if I were to stop and then try to do hands on, I'd probably never get you back looking at the screen again. So let me bear with me. Let me kind of go through this and plow through this. Um, Twitter. We're going to talk first about Twitter. And again, you're going to walk out today with a Twitter account. Um, you surely have heard about the Twitter phenomenon and what's going on. In I was sort of late to the game. I didn't really start to understand how Twitter could be applied in any context until probably about six or seven, eight months ago. And it's been around for at least a couple of years. It was actually a sidebar project from a company called Odeo. They were developing a whole other thing and it was just sort of one of those, hey, have you thought about how this works? And we had to think about this little application. And I was trying to remember that there was a there was a root need for Twitter, and I was trying to remember recall what it was now. There was something that actually spawned these guys to be thinking about developing this application. It escapes me now what it is, but it'll come to me pretty soon. Um, so yeah, Audio developed this, and it's obviously just taken on a life of its own. I expect Twitter itself to probably be bought up and uh, subsumed by Microsoft or one of the big, huge conglomerates fairly soon. It's not going to be a standalone company much longer, I'm sure. 
So I want to talk a little bit about how Twitter can be used in academia. So if you're, let me just stop for a second and talk a little bit about Twitter. Please ask any questions that you may have regarding how Twitter, what, if you're curious about what Twitter is. Twitter is, uh, again, it's considered a microblogging application. You can, but you don't have to, use your cell phone. You can just use your computer if you're interested. And what it is, is you send out little short bursts of information up to 140 characters in length. That's Characters include spaces. So 140 characters, spaces. And that will send a little message about what you're doing right now. Now that may seem pretty benign. And truly it is. And that's something I've kind of wrestled with. It's like, what? why would anybody want to know that I'm having lunch or this type of thing? But as you'll see, hopefully in a few minutes, that there are there's some, I think, some valid applications for this. This shortness, this brevity of 140 <coughs> characters is intentional. That's there's a there's a reason for that. You think, well, I need more space to be able to elaborate. No, that's the whole point is to make it very short and succinct, and these little short bursts of information which go out. Now, again, you can watch for the other feeds which come in via the uh, via your computer or via your cell phone. But be careful because if you're on the cell phone plan, obviously you're, those all count as text messages which come in. So unless you're on unlimited. You know, you're going to start to see some pretty hefty bills. And so I don't choose to have my tweets come into my cell phone. My tweets come into my, my personal computer. That way I can kind of manage it a little bit. I'll talk about that in just a second. Any questions about what sort of what Twitter is at a high level? Okay. We're going to talk, you're going to get a chance to actually see it in just a bit. So this is how Twitter, I'm going to show you a few examples of how Twitter can actually be used. Let me, Enlarge this here. So this is how Twitter can be used um, in academia. So I went out and I culled quite a bit of research about this and looked at some some lip review stuff. And I came back and started to sort of assemble all this from different parts and pieces. Some ac academicians and some are marketing people. The surprising thing is that Twitter has really gained a significant stronghold niche in marketing. And you have to sort of guard yourself against it because what happens is, is if you're not careful, you'll start to be overwhelmed with all these marketers who are trying to come at you, trying to get you to follow them. So that's the whole point of Twitter is that they follow you and you follow them. So you get their tweets or they in turn will see your tweets back and forth. This is sort of this exchange. But be very careful and guard yourself against that because these companies, these marketing people, are actually what they're doing is they have bots that go out and they find these Twitter people and they'll just automatically send a response to them. So it looks like it's coming from a valid source and somebody that really is interested in you, really wants to follow your tweets. No, it's, it's, it's just a ruse. That's just an automatic thing which is going out and finding that information. So be careful about that. So here's a few examples of how Twitter is being used currently in academia. One of them is what's called back channel chat, where people are at conferences and web proceedings and those types of things, and they can actually, either via their cell phone, mobile device, or even their PC, can hop onto Twitter and actually post some quick little bursts about what's going on. Could be the presenter, could be the topic, um, anything which is relevant to that particular conference. This back chatter is real important. Oh, and I sort of need to read through this a little bit more carefully. There's one of the things that you can do is uh, via this hash mark, you can actually specifically target keywords. So if a conference happens to be on some sort of a, you know, you're at a biology conference, and they're targeting specific keywords of this biology conference, you can actually filter all the tweets based on specific keywords relevant to that bio biological topic. So that's how you can kind of screen some of that. But I'm going to show you other ways to screen these tweets as well, because all these tweets come flooding in. So if you follow, you know, 10, 20, 30 people, and they tweet a lot, all that stuff, all that, those tweets just come pouring in. So you have to be able to filter that. I'll talk about that in just a bit. Questions so far? Doing good? Okay. The filter so far. 30 people. Yep. Yep. 